If you had one wish for your next design, what would you choose? And no, you can't choose more wishes. <laughs> would you choose to save cost and board space while accelerating development? Yeah, I would too. And guess what? We can do this today. No wishes involved. You just need two DSPIC 33C DSCs on a single chip. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. What if I told you you could get the functionality, isolation, and performance you require from one DSC instead of two, and save cost, board space, and accelerate development at the same time? Oh, yes. In this episode of Chalk Talk, we're talking about exactly this. Vijay Bapu from Microchip and I explore the benefits of dual core digital signal controllers. We discuss the key specifications to keep in mind when it comes to single core and dual core DSCs and how you can reduce your development time, save board space and cost, and keep the performance and isolation you need with Microchip's DSPIC33CH DSCs. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Microchip. Hi, VJ. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure. Excellent. Okay, so first off, what exactly is a dual-core DSC, VJ? That's a great start to this conversation. Basically, when we say a dual-core it's really two DSP33 devices in one chip. So essentially, each of these chips can run independently. They have dedicated debugging on each of the cores, and each of the cores have dedicated peripherals. So each of the cores can operate independently. So I just wanted to provide a little bit more background here. In most real-time control applications, typically have some time-critical tasks that you don't want to interrupt. And in addition to that, uh, you have some housekeeping or overhead-related tasks related to communications and interrupts. So historically, to implement both these functions, this took two MCUs. So one controller for uh, real-time control and the other for housekeeping and communications. Now, you can do this in a single chip with the dual core. And you can still keep the parallel development and a high level of independence between the two cores, that is uh, implementing the real-time control and housekeeping. So in the dual-core device, or what we call the DSP33CH, the secondary core is typically used for time-critical algorithms, that is for real-time control applications. And the main core handles all other accessory functions like communication stacks and uh, things like the CAN-FD stack and AutoSAR stack and other housekeeping functions. Okay, so VJ, what are the advantages of using a dual core DSC when compared to using two single core DSCs? Essentially, what we can do in this uh, dual core is you can separate your tasks between the two cores for optimal performance. So like I mentioned about the real-time control and the housekeeping and monitoring functions, so you can separate out these two functions between the two cores, the real-time control as well as the monitoring or the housekeeping functions. Another important thing that we're seeing in the industry is importance for functional safety critical applications in automotive as well as in industrial applications. And the key point here is that with the dual core device, you can isolate the safety critical functions on one of the cores and you can keep it separate from the rest of the applications. So this keeps the safety critical functions isolated and secure from the rest of the application. Also important to note that the dedicated application can be run on one of the cores or the secondary core in this case, and all communications and other housekeeping functions are running on the other core. Clearly, we see a reduced cost from a system standpoint and an optimized development time when we use the dual core device. So when we are developing software, the dual core enables the simplification of software development. And essentially, there are instances where you can have multiple teams working 
independently. So if they're geographically separated, you can have multiple teams work on the independent cores. And uh, when the software is combined, you can seamlessly integrate it and make this a very efficient process for developing separately and integrating seamlessly. Another thing is, if you have any third-party software that you would like to integrate into your application, it is fairly easy so that the third party can develop the software on one of the cores, and then you can streamline the integration when you're putting the entire system together. And overall, this saves system cost and board space by using one single chip instead of two chips that are traditionally used. That makes sense. So, Vijay, are there any cost savings if a customer chooses to use one dual-core DS-PIC33CHDSC instead of two in an application? Yeah, absolutely. That is a very critical aspect for the benefits of the dual-core. So, with the dual-core, essentially, you are replacing two single chips with one dual-core device. So, right there, you get some cost savings because the silicon cost for a single chip is obviously lower than the cost of implementing it with two chips. And we have one less MCU, and typically there are a lot of biasing circuits for each of these controllers. So each of these biasing circuits have something like a linear regulator or an LDO and some other associated circuitry with it. So you have only one set of the LDO and an associated circuits in the dual core device as compared to when you're using two separate single core device. And also you typically need things like an oscillator for the clocks and you really need just one oscillator in the case of the dual core as opposed to single core device. So Vijay, when a customer is thinking about using two single core DSPIC33C DSCs or one dual core DSC, what are the key parameters or specifications they should keep in mind when comparing these two devices? Typically, some of the key parameters that you would look to compare is performance. One of the most important things is performance, how the dual core performs with relative to single core devices. And in this case, the dual core performs as well, if not better than two single core devices. The performance is very comparable. And from an ease of use standpoint as well, the dual core CH device is uh, very comparable to single core dsp 33 ck devices. The key benefits that we see are in terms of the development time, the footprint and board space, and cost. With the development time, because you can have teams work on the two cores separately and integrate them seamlessly, you get improved development time because of this and because of the fact that you can seamlessly integrate an improvement in overall development time. And from a standpoint of footprint and board space, we only need one set of peripherals or shrubbery, if I would call it, for powering the DSP. You reduce the overall footprint because you have a lesser number of external circuits and you're using just a single dual core device as opposed to using two single core devices. And from a cost standpoint as well, the cost is halved because you have two cores running in a single chip as opposed to two chips. So you reduce cost as well. So you have improved development time, you have improved footprint and board space, and you have a reduced overall cost of the system. So clearly you see a big benefit using the dual core device. Absolutely. Now we've talked a lot about the dual core DSCs, but can you give us some use cases or examples on where these kind of devices are used today? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, we do have some very interesting use cases and applications that some of these dual core devices have been designed in. So I'll touch upon a few of those. So in the case of functional safety, how the dual core helps is that you can develop all the safety critical code in one of the cores, say the secondary core, and you can isolate them from the main core. And the main core can run functions like the housekeeping and any other communications and non-safety critical code basically can be run on the main code. Once you are isolating them, you're creating some kind of separation between the main and secondary core and the functionally safe 
core uh, is running on the secondary core and it's kind of isolated and really it is critical for any safety critical application. So for example, the safety code could be required for like a DC to DC converter or a battery management application or for example, a wireless charger. And all of this can be isolated on one of the cores and uh, safety levels can be maintained separately just on that core alone. Next example, we have seen some very interesting use case for a touch application. So essentially, the secondary core implements the sophisticated touch algorithm, and we can treat it as really a fixed function device. You can implement any specific fixed function device, like maybe a touch or any other functions in the secondary core and and isolate that functionality from the main core, which runs all the housekeeping and other non-safety critical applications. Another very interesting use case that we have seen is with automotive wireless power, so automotive in-car charging for Qi transmitters. So in this case, what we have seen works well is we can isolate the Qi firmware or the wireless power firmware into the secondary core. We can implement the functions of the power control, demodulation, and any authentication, all of that in the secondary core, and use the main core for functions like AutoSAR, any CAN communication, and any other housekeeping functionalities. In fact, we did have a customer who was previously using a two-chip solution, one chip for implementing Qi and another chip for implementing the communications, and they upgraded their system with one dual core, which combines both of these functionalities, but separating out the functions in between the two cores. And lastly, there is an interesting application with motor control. We've seen some use of the dual core device in an air conditioner application, where essentially the secondary core is running the field-oriented control of the fan and the compressor motors in the air conditioner. And the main core is running functions like the PFC, the power factor correction, and other housekeeping and communication functions. So essentially, we have parallel development between the two cores, so we can optimize the time to market for uh, a customer. And uh, we can have the individual teams develop the specific software in each of the different cores and then seamlessly integrate them when you're putting the entire system together. All right. So, BJ, this has been a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? Yes. To really summarize at a very high level, one of the most important aspects of using the dual core device is the high performance. You really have the performance of two individual single core devices. And uh, because of the way the dual core is architected, it reduces the development time where I talked about individually developing on the two cores and seamlessly integrating. And also the fact that you can isolate the safety critical applications and any real-time operations that you want to perform on one of the cores and separate it out from the housekeeping and communication functions. And also, as a result of all of this, you can really save on both space and cost because of the fact that you have just a single dual-core device or really have two DSPICs in a single chip as opposed to two separate DSPIC devices. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure and and I really enjoyed this discussion. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Microchip. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.